In this video, it's finally time to start putting the one liter EcoBoost engine back together. In the last video, I removed all the valves and associated components from the cylinder head, gave this a thorough clean, replaced the valve stem oil seals, and then rebuilt the cylinder head. So in this video, I'm looking to get the cylinder head installed back onto the engine block with a brand new head gasket, and I'm also looking to tackle the timing belt and associated components as well. I've got a full engine rebuild kit, including a brand new timing belt, a head gasket and all the other gaskets and seals that I'm going to need. I've got a new crankshaft oil seal to go on and I've also got new head bolts. I managed to get the timing belt and the head gasket all in one kit but there's also a few other bits I had to buy separately so I'll leave links to all of those down in the description for you. Now there was a couple of different options when it came to the timing belt and the head gasket kit. There were direct OE replacements and there was also some cheaper options which is what I went for but I happen to know that Deco make the OE timing belts for these engines and for a lot of other engines and other manufacturers as well so that wasn't a concern i'm not 100 percent sure what brand this head gasket is but it's certainly going to be a vast improvement over what we had on here when we took this apart and i've also given the cylinder head a nice little coat of that engine enamel that we used on the rest of the engine block i'll take you through the tightening sequence for the cylinder head as well as all the individual torque specs as we go through this rebuild but before i can crack on and actually install the cylinder head there's one last thing that i need to do and that is to clean up the top of the engine block for one last time so that it's perfectly clean and smooth ready for the new head gasket. I've already managed to clean up most of this mating surface with one of these plastic scrapers but there's a few little bits on here that that couldn't quite get to. Although it does feel pretty smooth I can just about feel some rough patches where there's some carbon buildup on the top of the engine block so I'm going to try it and go one better with that and get that as smooth as I possibly can so we get the best possible seal with the new head gasket. I've already removed these dowel pins so that they don't get in my way and they came out nice and easily just with light pressure from a pair of pliers but if you do get some stubborn ones especially on older engines where these are stuck a little tip is to use a drill bit that fits perfectly inside the dowel pin you want it to be nice and tight this one's probably a little bit loose but if it fits nice and tightly in there you can grip the dowel pin really tight with a pair of grips without risking deforming it. And that way you should still be able to reuse it. Luckily for me, these came out without the need to do that, but that's just a little tip if you find yourself in that situation. So before I prep the top of the engine block, I'm just stuffing some paper towels in cylinders two and three, just to try and catch any little bits that I possibly can to stop them falling in the cylinders, but I will make sure to clean these out properly before everything goes back together. As for the coolant passages, there isn't really anything that I can do at this stage to clean those out. So I'm gonna make sure that once the engine's back up and running, I'm gonna coolant flush it a couple of times to clear out any remnants of that old dried coolant that's in there because it does look pretty grim at the moment. To prep the top of the engine block I'm using some 240 grit emery cloth wrapped around a file and gently sanding the top of the block making sure not to focus in one particular area and try and distribute evenly across the whole surface. Like I say this is just to try and remove any little bits of carbon buildup that I can feel. I'm not necessarily trying to remove everything that I can see. I've seen people go at this with rotary tools and even air tools in the past, and yeah, they come out with really shiny looking surfaces. But just because a block looks all shiny and super clean doesn't mean it's 100% flat and true. I've had this block checked over with a proper straight edge and a feeler gauge, and I've been told that it is within spec, so I know it's good to go. The sanding was just a last little step that the guys at the machine shop suggested just to get any last little bits of carbon buildup off of here. Now, obviously, you can still see some remnants of that on here, but the important thing is that I can't feel it. I've taken that down enough so that there's absolutely nothing that feels raised at all on this whole mating surface where the head gasket is going to sit. And that, like I say, is the important thing that we want here. So that's it. We're pretty much ready to install the cylinder head and the new head gasket. So I'm just gonna give this one final clean, make sure the inside of the cylinders are as clean as I can get them, make sure the top of the block is as clean and free from any dust and oil as I can get it, and then we're installing the head. Just quickly before I clean the top of the block one last time, I'm flipping the engine over and blowing out any little bits of debris out of the cylinders, and I'm also blowing any remnants of oil out of the head bolt holes. You don't want any oil sitting in there because it could give you inaccurate torque readings when you tighten up the head bolts, or in extreme cases, when you tighten those head bolts down, it creates excessive pressure and can actually crack your engine block. So you definitely want to clear those out. After I've blown everything out with a can of compressed air, I'm just using some brake cleaner and some paper towels just for one final clean. Next, I'm flipping the engine back over, reinstalling the locating dowel pins, and then cleaning the top of the engine block one last time, ready to accept the new head gasket. Now, I'm aware that there are additional sealing products like Well Seal out there that you can use between the head gasket and the mating surfaces themselves. But in this instance, because I've never actually done a head gasket before and therefore I've never 
never had any problems doing it before, then for me, at this point, I'm not going to use anything like that, but if I do encounter any problems and I have to do this again in the future, then maybe that's something that I would look at using. I'm giving the bottom of the cylinder head one final clean and then setting it in place on top of the new head gasket. And now it's actually starting to look a little bit more like an engine again. Now the next step is to install the head bolts. And this is going to divide opinion with a few people. Some say you should use them dry, others say you should lubricate your head bolts. For me, I'm going to lubricate them based on things that I've read and also from speaking to some very knowledgeable people, I've chosen to lubricate the head bolts with a little bit of engine oil. Now I'm not drenching them in engine oil, I'm just putting a little bit of oil onto the threads just to stop them binding when I tighten these down and I'm also putting a little bit of oil just around the underside of the bolt head to stop it binding against the surface it sits on inside the cylinder head. I'll let you guys thrash it out in the comments as to whether or not you think you should oil your head bolts while I'm installing mine. Then I'm just going to run them down so they're all finger tight. Now like with most things on these engines the tightening sequence of the head bolts is far from simple so by far the best move that I've made was buying the Haynes manual for this car. The worst move I've made? Well that was buying the car in the first place but hey we move so to tighten the head bolts there's six stages and each stage follows exactly the same order that's displayed on screen the first stage is to tighten all of the head bolts to 10 newton meters and then the second stage is to tighten all the head bolts up to 40 newton meters pretty simple just to start us off but then stage three you actually want to loosen all the head bolts by 45 degrees i bought one of these angle gauges and i managed to use it but if i'm honest it wasn't the best it was hard to kind of get it held still with a little pin that comes with it i'm sure there are better ones out there but honestly i wish i just hadn't bothered stage four was nice and simple tighten all the head bolts to 30 newton meters and then stage five an additional 90 degrees followed by stage six another additional 90 degrees now i know the sequence wasn't really that complicated and i know you have to do stuff like this for these types of bolts but i think that angle gauge just really wound me up and as you'll see i don't use it again for the rest of the video okay so there we go that is the cylinder head fully bolted down and torqued to the correct forward specs now i hope you guys found that easy enough to follow along with like i don't know how many of you would actually be attempting this or whether you're just watching this for i don't know entertainment rather than instructional to actually learn how to do this but for those of you that have asked me about this like i say i hope you found it easy enough to follow along with what i was doing there so now we've got the new head gasket installed and the cylinder heads bolted back down it's time to move on and we can now reinstall the camshafts with all the bearing caps if you remember i've had the camshaft and all the bearing caps stored in the correct order and orientation that they came off the engine so i can make sure they go back on exactly the same way it's important that you do this because the bearing caps themselves are each individually machined to fit the camshaft in the exact position of where they came off the engine. So that is why you need to make sure that these are stored in the correct order and they go back on in the correct order. So let's get the camshafts back on the engine and then we can run through the torque specs and sequence for tightening down those bearing caps. Before I install the camshaft, I'm applying some assembly lube to the lower portion of the bearings inside the cylinder head. Then I can set the camshafts in place, lubricate the bearing caps and pop these on in the correct order. Then I'm running down all the bolts so they're just finger tight for now. The two end caps at the gearbox end actually need to be sealed to the cylinder head. Now Ford specifies a particular sealant for this, but I didn't buy that because it was a ridiculous price so I'm using some red RTV I got off Amazon. I would drop a link in the description, but the back of the tube blew out while I was trying to do it. It made a complete mess, so I definitely wouldn't recommend it. Who knows if it'll actually work, but I mean, it's just some generic gasket sealant made for this application, so what could possibly go wrong? I will leave the part number for the sealant that Ford recommends in the description, but like I said, I haven't used that. And likewise, if I've got a part or something that I don't have a link for, I'll at least give you the part number down in the description. Now with those two end caps installed and the bolts run down finger tight, the manual says to tighten all the bearing cap bolts, two turns, in the order that I'm showing on screen, and then to torque each bolt in the same order to 10 Newton meters. Okay, so that is the camshaft and all the bearing caps installed and torqued down, so we're ready to go. As far as that's concerned, there's some locking tools I need to put on top of the camshaft just to set those in place, ready to install the new timing belt, which I've got down here. Like I mentioned earlier, this is a Deco timing belt, but Deco actually make the OE belts. It just would come Ford branded. So this is pretty much a Ford OE part. And then I've got a new tensioner and a new bolt as well. The tensioner's already got a locking pin in it, so I don't have to worry about putting that under tension first. So I'm just gonna lock the camshaft in place with the locking tool that I told you about a minute ago. 
and then we're gonna fit the timing belt. So these locking tools that I'm using on my camshaft are from the same kit as the tools that I used to set the crankshaft in position when we undid the crank pulley bolt and also the flywheel locking tool we used to completely lock the crankshaft while we undid that bolt. And I'm gonna be using those same tools to tighten it all back up again. So these camshaft locking tools just bolt to where the rocker cover would bolt to, just finger tight to start with. And the little bolts that you need come with the kit. And then there's little flat spots on the camshafts that locate them in the right position there's a little barcode on there which faces upwards you should have seen this if you've seen my previous videos where i actually remove the camshafts and set the time in at the engine to start with you can use a large spanner on these spots here to make any adjustments to the camshafts before you lock them in place so these little locating spots sit in the tool and then you can tighten the tool up to make sure it holds the camshaft firmly in position there's also a locking nut on there so you can tighten it down and make sure nothing is going to move. And then the guide says once you're happy everything's in place, you can torque down the tool to the cylinder head to 10 newton meters. It's also a good time to check that our crankshaft setting pin is still seated firmly up against the crankshaft, or rather the crankshaft is still up against the pin. Once I'm happy the camshaft and the crankshaft are locked in the right position, I'm installing the new belt tensioner and torquing the bolt to 25 newton meters. After a quick check of the new belt against the old belt, it's time to install the new belt. And the guide says to first install the belt over the crankshaft sprocket, then over the exhaust cam sprocket, then the inlet cam sprocket, and finally over the tensioner pulley. After checking the belt seated correctly and that it's taut between the two cam sprockets, it's time to pull the pin from the tensioner and put tension on the belt. Okay, so there we go, that's the timing belt fitted and it actually wasn't too difficult after all. I'm quite happy with how this has come out. I think everything was nice and simple, especially with all those locking tools and everything. The belt is nice and tight and I think we're good to go with that. But we're getting towards the point now where we need to do the bit that everyone's been asking about, but also the bit I'm really worried about. And that's reinstalling the timing cover and eventually that crank pulley bolt, which you guys have been hounding me about. I've been getting a lot of comments and a lot of questions on Instagram about how I'm actually gonna do it. So that is coming up very shortly, but before we can do that, there is just one more thing I need to do, and that is to change the rear main seal. I don't think it's leaking at all, but I actually damaged the housing when I was cleaning up the sump gasket. I mistook part of the gasket on the rear main seal housing for gasket material that was holding the sump to the bottom of the engine so i need to go ahead and change it anyway so i need to change it out anyway and i've got a ford oe replacement rear main seal but because it's on the gearbox side of the engine we can't really get at it all that easily so the engine is gonna have to come off the engine stand for me to do that so i'm gonna pop the sump back on real quick and then i've got the engine crane down here there's something else i've brought down here as well i don't know if you've seen it yet <laughs> the mark sevens here but there's a good reason it's here. We'll get onto that in a little bit. So for now, it's time to get this down and change out the rear main seal. Okay, so we've got the engine down on the floor. I did actually lose a little bit of footage. Well, forgot to press play really, but fast forward, here we are, we're down on the floor. I've just got it sitting on a tire with a blanket to protect the sump because we painted that. And I just want to keep that looking nice and fresh, but here is the rear main seal that we're gonna be replacing and it sits on this like cover or retainer. So this is the new one and it comes with a little like sleeve to help you locate it when you push the new one on. So this gasket on the back here, it's these little bits at the bottom. I was scraping away and trying to pick away at them when I was cleaning up the remnants of the gasket left over on the sump. So that's why I'm changing this out. It's nothing to do with the seal, but for like 16 quid for an OE Ford part, I thought why not change this out while I'm here, just as like preventive maintenance and like I say, because I was worried about having damaged that gasket. So we're gonna whip off the six remaining bolts. There's eight in total, two of them are part of what holds the sump on, so I haven't put those back in. Whip these six off, old rear main seal out, new one in, and fingers crossed, it should be nice and easy. So here's the old part. As you can see, those are those bits I was picking away at that one doesn't actually look too bad but this one you can see where I've kind of ripped into it there so I was just worried that when I seal the sump back on that it's just not going to seal properly and I'm going to end up with leaks and all sorts of problems so like I said for £16 I think this cost it was just worth it to replace it because not only am I solving that potential issue I'm also you know just replacing the rear main seal because it's something that's going to need doing at some point anyway so I might as well do it now right I'm just going to clean up the maintenance surfaces there and clean up the end of the crankshaft and then we're going to fit the new one.
The white plastic sleeve is just to help guide the seal onto the crankshaft and make sure it seats correctly. Once you've got the retainer bolted down, then you can remove that. And like I say, it just makes that seal sit perfectly on the crankshaft. The bolts get tightened in a crisscross pattern and torqued to 10 Newton meters. Okay, there we go. So that's the rear main seal changed out and it was actually really easy, which is a surprise for one of these engines because most stuff on these engines is just crazy difficult and complicated. But like I said, this one is nice and easy. So I'm going to crack on and get the engine back up on the engine stand. Again, there's no need to show you that because it's not really important to this video. I'm going to get that back up on the engine stand and then we can carry on. Unfortunately, it has gone dark. Like I've got the door shut now. It is hard to film in here. I've literally got that strip light up there and a tiny little light up there. So it does kind of suck for lighting in here. Hopefully I'll get that sorted in the near future because I'm hoping to do a lot more work down here, especially in the winter months on the ST or on the Mark 7, depending on how we go with that. So stick with me for that, but I'll catch up with you when the engine's back on the stand and we've got a bit more daylight. Okay, it's a new day and it's time to carry on and it's nearly time to install the timing cover there's just a couple of little jobs that i've got to do and then the cover can go on okay so here is the timing cover i've already gone ahead and cleaned up all the maintenance surfaces here but the one thing i do need to do is i need to knock out this old crankshaft seal i'm going to knock this one out with the cover off the engine and then once it's fit back on here i think it'll be a lot easier to reinstall the new one and then i've also got to put a little seal in here and then this is good to go and fit onto the engine now this next bit is quite critical because if i get any leaks after sealing the timing cover and the sump on here and then I fit the engine back in the car, fill it with oil, get it running, and something leaks, then I've got to take it all out and do everything again, which means also fitting all the crank pulley bolt and all that again means a new bolt each time if I do get it wrong, because you have to use a new bolt every time you do it. So this bit is really important. So I'm gonna set the camera up, I'm gonna take my time, make sure I've got everything I need, I'm gonna get the door open, get some light in here, and just set the camera up. I'm not gonna talk through it because I need to concentrate and I need to get this right because I don't wanna have to do this all again. So let's crack on. Fingers crossed I get it right first time. Wish me luck. The sealant used for the timing cover has quite a short window from when it's applied to when you need to have it bolted down. So I'm making sure I've got all the tools, bolts, and everything that I'm gonna to need to hand before I go ahead and install the cover and the sump as well. So the first thing I'm doing is knocking out the drive shaft oil seal, and then I'm gonna reinstall the new one once the cover's fitted because it'll actually give me something to push against. Then I'm cleaning the aperture where the seal sits so it's ready to go once the cover's installed. I've also got to install the water pump because two of the seven bolts that bolt the water pump to the timing cover are part of the sequence for bolting the timing cover to the engine. So installing the water pump with a brand new gasket and then five of the bolts that just bolt the pump to the cover and then the remaining two, like I said, will be part of the sequence when we bolt the cover onto the engine. Next, I'm cleaning up all the mating surfaces on the engine, on the sump and on the timing cover. And then I nearly forgot, but there's this little seal which needs to go in the cover before it's installed on the engine. Right, it's time to get the cover installed. So I've got all the bolts laid out in order. I've got all the tools that I'm gonna need and I've also got the tightening sequence as well as the torque specs to hand, so let's go. For the timing cover and the sump, again, there's a special forward sealant, but this time I have gone ahead and picked up that sealant because speaking to some people that have done this before, they said you definitely want to use the correct sealant for this. So I've gone ahead and ordered that. I don't have a link for it because I got it directly from my local Ford dealership, but I have put the part number down in the description if you're looking to get the sealant for yourself. Now the manual says that once this sealant's applied, you only have 10 minutes to install the cover before the sealant goes off. So I need to work quickly here. Now the Haynes manual that I'm using goes into a lot of detail on the different thicknesses of the bead of sealant that you need to run in different areas of the timing cover and on the engine block as well. It would just be far too complicated for me to try and explain it in a voiceover, so that's why I've left the images on screen, so hopefully you can use those if you were looking to do this yourself. I'd also like to say a massive thank you to Haynes. I reached out to them and asked if it was okay to use these images, and they said that as long as they're credited, then it's okay for me to use them. Once I've got the timing cover in position, then I can install the bolts and run them all down finger tight before moving on to the proper tightening sequence. And again, this is really complicated complicated and it would just be too difficult for me to explain the whole thing in a voiceover in the video. Again, I'm using the images from the Haynes manual, but guys, if you were tackling this yourself, the Haynes manual is an invaluable resource. It really helped me out. So I highly recommend you go and pick one of those up if you're thinking of tackling a job like this for yourself. So with the timing cover installed and all the bolts torqued to spec, I can do the same with the sump. And now we're really starting to get somewhere. This engine is starting to look 
really good. But we're not done yet, I need to install a new crankshaft oil seal and then we can install the crank pulley. And as always, it's not a simple process. So we're going to be reusing the original pulley, but whenever you install one of these pulleys, you have to use a brand new bolt, which is why I've been so keen to get things spot on first time round, not only with the pulley, but also with the timing cover as well, because the pulley would have to come off to refit that. We also have to fit this friction washer. Now this isn't fitted from factory, but again, every time you fit a pulley after that, you have to use a new one of these friction washers between the pulley and the timing belt sprocket. Now there's no keyway on the pulley, but there is this little setting pin. So once the pulley's installed, the pin goes through the pulley and then locates into the timing belt cover and it's removed after the first two stages of the tightening sequence. That setting pin is part of the timing toolkit I bought. I'm cleaning the mating surfaces between the pulley and the timing belt sprocket and then installing the friction washer followed by the pulley before doing up the bolt hand tight and installing the locating pin. Before we can tighten up the crank pulley bolt I need to install the rest of the locking tools and I also need to get the engine down off the engine stand. We already have the camshafts locked in place but there's also these VVT locking tools that come with the kit as well so I'm installing those and we already have the crankshaft setting pin installed but that isn't enough to lock it in place with the amount of torque we're putting through the crank pulley bolt so with the engine lifted down off the engine stand i can reinstall the flywheel and the flywheel locking tool now like i said all these locking tools come as part of a kit and i'll leave a link to that kit in the description now i'm actually skipping the first two stages of the tightening sequence for the crank pulley bolt and i'm going to cinch it down with my impact gun <laughs> Right, okay, so that is the crank bolt started at least. Now, the reason I've done it up with a gun rather than doing it with the 25 newton meters and then the 70 newton meters that it advises to start with is just to try and reduce the amount of like twist on this just to try and stop this spinning. I mean, it's got this locating pin in here and that's actually been in, you know, it's, it's tighter than it should be. You're supposed to remove this after you do it 70 newton meters and I'm going to probably struggle to remove that, but I will get that out in a minute. But at least we've got this bolt started and now we should be ready to torque this up. And this is the bit that I know a lot of you have been waiting for and that's to find out how I'm actually going to tighten this bolt up without the torque multiplier that Ford say that you need. But I do have the Haynes manual and the Haynes manual does say that there is a way of doing it without and that is to torque this bolt up to 300 newton meters and then an extra 90 degrees and then that should be tight enough for the Ford specification that they use when using the torque multiplier. But how am I gonna do it without this rocking around? Well, that's why the car's down here. And I've also got the gearbox down here. So the plan is I'm gonna take the front end off the car again, take the bonnet off, get everything out of the way so I've got nice easy access to the engine mounts and the gearbox mounts. And then the plan is bolt the gearbox on, lift this into the car, and then I'm gonna borrow a torque wrench off a guy in work who's got one that goes high enough for what I need. And then all it will be a case of is just borrowing the torque wrench overnight, quickly tightening up that bolt, and then you can have it back the following morning. So for now, I'm gonna get the gearbox onto the engine and then try and get this engine mounted in there. I'm not 100% sure if this is gonna work, whether we're gonna have the access, but fingers crossed, we can do it. So I'm bolting the gearbox back onto the engine just so we've got all the mounting points in place to hold this thing as still as I can while I torque up that crank pulley bolt. I did have to remove the flywheel locking tool to install the gearbox, so I'm just reinstalling the tool. Then I can remove the bonnet and the whole front end of the car comes off as one. It's one whole like rad pack and crash bar in one. So this just unbolts, we lifted out the way and then it was really simple with all this access to just lift the engine in and do up the engine mount and the gearbox mount. Then I could reach underneath and do up the lower gearbox mount. Right, okay, so we've got the engine back in the car. It is gonna be coming out again. It's not in here for good. So I've not torqued everything up, but all the bolts are as tight as they need them to be. We've got gearbox mount on down there, engine mount on this side, lower gearbox mount just down there. And I've managed to borrow a torque wrench from Al at work. It's a snap-on torque wrench nonetheless, and it goes up to 350 newton meters. And that's plenty for what we need to tighten up this crank pulley bolt. So I'm not sure if I've mentioned it already, but that crank pulley bolt, if you're not using the torque multiplier like Ford recommends that you need, then you need to tighten to 300 newton meters and then an extra 90 degrees. So we're gonna go 300 newton meters with the torque wrench, and then we're gonna go an extra 90 degrees on top of that. And that should give us as close to the Ford specification as you're gonna get with conventional tools. Now I know people are still to say oh you need the torque multiplier but i know people that have done this i've spoken to people that have done this before and they've had success doing it this way but it's one bolt it's one torque you don't need like some crazy sequence like you just don't i've spoken to mechanical engineers about this procedure and again they say you don't need it it's just to make it easier for ford when they're doing it in the car but most of the time they won't even do it because they'll just chuck the engine and replace it but it can be done and that's exactly what we're about to do so i've already gone ahead and taken out that locating pin because you're meant to take that out after the second stage so i think i've mentioned it earlier but the first two stages you're meant to do 25 newton meters then 70 newton meters then you take that pin out and then if you're using the torque multiplier you go through the rest of it but for what we're doing then you go up to 300 newton meters and then the extra 90 degrees i know i didn't use those first two but 
The reason I, I think I've already explained why I didn't do that, but I wanted to use the gun rather than using a bar on this. Because if you use a bar on this or a torque wrench or whatever, you're going to get uneven force on that and you could end up spinning this pulley. So with the gun, it was just a quick way of cinching that down and making sure that this pulley didn't rotate. So we're pretty much ready to go. Let's set the torque wrench to 300 newton meters and get this crank pulley bolt torqued up. Okay, so that's torque wrench set to 300 newton meters. Pop on 21 mil socket. Let's get the torque wrench onto that crank pulley bolt. Okay, so that's our 300 newton meters done. Now we just need to go an extra 90 degrees. Now to go the extra 90 degrees, I don't think my poxy little half inch drive breaker bar is quite gonna cut it. You saw how this was bending when I had that piece of metal tubing on it when I actually loosened this in a previous video. So we're not gonna be using this. I've actually gone ahead and picked up a much larger breaker bar. And this one has a three quarter inch drive on it. And I've gone ahead and got a 21 mil three quarter inch drive socket to go with it. So that is gonna be plenty big enough to get us the extra 90 degrees to finish tightening up this crank pulley bolt. So let's get it done. As you can see, the bolt is sitting pretty much with this point there of the six pointing straight upwards. So I'm just gonna make a little mark on the bolt there. And then I wanna try and get a bang on 90 degrees to that. So let's mark it about there on the pulley. So we're gonna be, I mean, it's gonna be pretty much there. We're within 10 degrees. I'm not gonna use an angle gauge on this because A, I don't have a three quarter inch drive one and B, the one I used previously was an absolute nightmare. So that's good enough for me, as long as the pulley doesn't spin anyway. Let's get this thing tightened up. Say that's about 45. You have to do it in a few stages. Like this isn't ideal. Ideally you want to do it all in one movement, but I just haven't got that luxury. So I'm just going to go a little bit at a time to make sure we get this all the way. Oh, Jesus Christ. Almost a tiny little bit more and we're there. Probably like 10 degrees. Let's have a look. Are we there? Oh, not quite actually, are we? Oh yeah, bang on. Bang on. There we go. Now that is the bit you've all been waiting for. I've had so many people message me or comment and just ask, how are you gonna tighten that bolt up? How are you gonna tighten that bolt up without a torque multiplier? And there you go, that's how you do it. It really is that simple. Yes, okay, we don't know if the engine runs, don't know if it starts, anything like that just yet, but We've done it to this point and I'm confident that it's gonna work and I'm excited now to carry on and just finish getting this engine rebuilt so I can finally drive this car. But there's a few, still a few little things I need to do. Like I need to get the engine back out, get all the locking tools out, spin the engine over twice and then just check that everything still lines up to make sure everything's still in time. That is one thing I do need to do. I'm not gonna do that in this video, but just quickly before we go, for this one, let's see if that little locating pin for the pulley still fits. Okay, moment of truth, because there's one thing you're supposed to check. Looking at it, it looks like the hole lines up. So, ooh. Yes, awesome, that still fits. So that means the pulley didn't spin while we tightened this up. So that is a win. You know what, I actually can't get it back out, there we go. So that is a win. I'm so happy with that. Now, like I said, we're not out of the woods just yet. There's still quite a few things that I need to do. So what I am going to do is I could rebuild the engine, like finish it off with it in the car, but I'm not going to do that because of, you know, it's a couple of mounts and getting the engine crane out to whip that back out again. And then I can finish rebuilding the engine off the car while I'm doing that. I can remove the gearbox and then I can clean that up, maybe paint it. Anyway, that is all going to be in another video. I mean, I'm not going to show you me painting the gearbox. I'm not going to show you me getting the engine back out because it's just a case of a couple of bolts and whipping the engine out with a crane but the next video will be me finishing off the rebuild on the engine so putting all the extra little bits back on so ac compressor alternator uh exhaust inlet manifold whatever order it all goes in you know all the pipes all the hoses all the electronics all that sort of stuff and the engine will be back in the car completed at the end of the next video. I'm not sure exactly when it will be because there's still a few parts I need to order for the front of this thing. So I'd probably need a whole rad pack. I know I need that little pump that cools the turbo and all that stuff, but that is all gonna be in the next video because this one has been long enough and I need to get it edited and get it out to you guys because I know you've been waiting a while to see this, but 
we finally done it. We've got that crank pulley bolt done up. Hopefully everything's in time. We'll find out in the next video. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. And please, if you've enjoyed this, please give it a like because it really, really helps me out. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.